Welcome to this video where I describe the usage of a data source with the JPA framework. This video is part of the data sources video series, so have a look at the other videos linked in the comment. This video will describe how to use then the data source with the JPA framework. There is also another video describing how we can use it with the JDBC framework. These videos are general in purpose, that means that they are not specific for any kind of database. There are other videos where I define how you can use the MySQL, Postgre and Oracle databases in combination with Payara Server and Payara Micro. So maybe a few words about the JPA framework, although it is not the idea to explain it in detail. This, that is not the purpose of this video. So the JPA is the usage of the relational data within your Java Enterprise application. It is an ORM framework, an object relational mapping framework. So that means that you map the data stored within Java objects to your rel relational database and um, vice versa. The advantage of the JPA framework is that you can remove a lot of boilerplate and errors like not closing result sets and data sources which are common with the JDBC framework. So let's have a demo and see how you can define the data source within JPA. I have created a small example program that uses JPA so that you can see how you can define the data source for the framework. The program has one single dependency and it is the Jakarta EE 8 dependency which also includes the JPA framework. The demo will be executed with Payara so and since Payara is a certified runtime um, this dependency on scope provided is enough since all the dependencies are already included in the runtime. The main configuration of the JPA framework is done in a file called persistence.xml. Within that file, we also define the GNDI name for the data source that holds the connection to the database. Every Jakarta compliant server needs to have a default GNDI to a internal database. It's called the underscore underscore default. I'm going to use this as example here, although uh, for real world applications, you have to use the proper GNDI, proper configured data source to one of the databases. Look at one of the other videos on how you can do this. Besides the data source, you can also define properties that the, uh, for the configuration of the framework. Here I have defined that the tables need to be created at startup because it is a demo so that I have uh, demo data available for my little application. And I also put here, for instance, the Eclipse link specific configuration as Payara uses the Eclipse link implementation for GPA. And here the config of the logging level is set to finest so that I have a lot of information of what is going on through that JPA framework. Another important aspect of JPA is that you can annotate your POJO classes so that there is a mapping between the Java and the database. Here I have defined a class company which will be mapped to the table company in the database and I have two columns, a ID column which is also the primary key and another column called name where I can store the name. Retrieving data from that uh, database is then done through an entity manager which you can inject here into this um, EGB, which automatically defines the transactions. And here I 
launch a query to search for a company which has a matching ID as primary key. To complement this example, I have created a YAXRS endpoint so that I can use that boundary to retrieve a certain value from the database and return it as JSON value. Since my application is created with Maven, I can create the var artifact that needs to be deployed with the command maven clean package. It will build my application, compile the sources, gather all the required files in a single file, in a var file, and it will is ready now to be deployed on the server. I have here a Payara server running. So the domain one is running and it is uh, the um, version, the latest version at this time of the community edition. So you see it is the 2020.7 version which is running here, which means I can deploy my application on that server. It now verifies all the configuration that you have done, so also for GPA, and it checks that the database connection is valid, so there is no error, everything is okay. And that means that I can call the endpoint, which return the result of my database. So in this demo, you saw how you can configure the database. Here it was the default database for the Jakarta compliance servers, the internal one. Have a look at the other videos, how you can define the connection for your database, a specific database that you are using um, for your application. Also have a look at the JDBC version and how you can use the data source there in the case that you want to have more control over the queries that are executed to the database. Thank you for watching and um, see you in one of the other videos. Bye.